I traveled 3,000 miles to the Amazon to find one of these little birds, but not just one, hundreds of thousands. But wait, I have to show you how I got here first, and that starts all the way back. In Austin. Do you guys remember like six months ago when we went to a random parking lot in Round Rock, Texas, and we saw a bunch of purple martins flying around? Every year, these little birds embark on an insane, amazing journey that's 5,000 miles. And today I have the unique opportunity to travel with Purple Martin Conservation Association on a journey deep into the heart of the Amazon. We're on the Negro River right now looking for purple martins as they flock in the hundreds of thousands in their non-breeding range, uh, which unfortunately their non-breeding range for us today is really rainy. But we're doing it anyway. <laughs> Purple martins historically would have nested in woodpecker holes and forests and trees. Prior to European settlement, they nested also in indigenous communities where they would hang hollowed out gourds. That was a tradition that was established prior to European settlement. And uh, westward expansion and European settlers came, took on the tradition of putting up these houses for purple martins, but at the same time, were clearing forests and they introduced a few invasive species, the house sparrow and the European starling. And those also compete with purple martins for secondary cavities, these woodpecker holes to nest in. But the combination of habitat loss, as well as pressure from these invasive species, the end result right now is that East of the Rocky Mountains, where almost all of these birds live, they are 100% reliant on people providing nest boxes for them to reproduce in. So without people doing that, they would basically cease to exist uh, and be unable to reproduce east of the Rocky Mountains and go extinct locally. We're on the boat. This is my room for the next two nights. Upstairs. This is actually a cool spot. Okay, we so far have been on two planes. This is our third hotel, technically. We're in a boat hotel right now, so we're staying here on a boat for the next two nights. Um, and we took a van to get out here, and now we're taking a boat to get out to see the birds, and then we're getting on a smaller boat to get more in to go see the birds, and then we're going into the jungle. So far, so good. <laughs> We are waiting to get on a boat to go to see the Purple Martins for the first time. Apparently they flock by the hundreds of thousands. We gotta get on a boat to go to their island to see them. The weather is really nice right now. It's cooled down quite a bit. Uh, sunset is coming and it looks really beautiful. I think it's gonna be sick when the sun actually sets. A, but there is some storm clouds, so we might get hit by some rain. So we'll see how that affects the sighting of Purple Martins and our experience as a whole, but so far so good. So we traveled on this little boat to this island. This is where the Purple Martins roost. So we are waiting here until sunset uh, when they all fly down to the roost to see them all. Um, we're just sitting waiting, also hoping it doesn't rain. It doesn't look that crazy uh, behind me right now. Behind me, the weather looks okay. But if you turn around and look the other way, there, it's not looking very good. We are moving the boat either to get a better view of the Purple Martins or to escape the rain. But if it's the latter, it's not gonna happen. It's gonna start coming down very soon. <laughs> oh, okay, we're moving. There are Purple Martins though, a couple of them, and you can hear them too. Oh, there they are. All right. Oh my gosh, well, we're seeing a lot of birds all of a sudden. I don't know if the camera can catch that. There were like a couple sprinkled in there, and now you look up and it is just birds. So many birds. And it's gonna get, there's gonna be a lot more. 
It'll look like there's nothing here, but just wait. <laughs> there's a lot of birds here right now. So apparently, normally they'd be in the air for much longer, like 30 minutes, but because of the rain, they're coming down a lot faster. So that's why they're all pretty low. But it's kind of cool because they've been flying really close to us. So I've gotten to really look at them. And they don't want to come out because it's raining. <laughs> well, it's the rainforest. It's raining. <laughs> Birds, here. All right, this was our first attempt at finding martins, um, but we're seeing more rain than birds right now. Um, as you can see, can't really pick what happens out here. All right, we're heading back to the big boat. Too much rain, not enough birds. We'll try again in the morning. Uh, the rain has soaked through my apparently not raincoat, and I'm currently protecting our paper script so that I can read it tomorrow because I do not have it memorized. Um, here's some, I mean, there are some birds going by us right now, but not nearly as many as we were hoping to see today. So we'll come out in the morning and, and find them again. Hopefully they'll be more interested in coming out when it's not so rainy. We went out today to look for the birds. We got rained out, as you probably saw. It was sick. Uh, it was a 10 out of 10 immersion experience. But it was bad for birds because they didn't want to hang out because it was raining. So our plan now is to go to sleep on this boat and then get up and hopefully see more of them and hopefully not get rained out. And the script made it, by the way. It, well, it's like a little messed up and a little floppy, but they're drying overnight. My folder, <laughs> but it'll, he'll be fine. Don't worry, they'll dry overnight. It'll be great, easy peasy. Um, and tomorrow we'll find birds and it'll be great, easy peasy. We had dinner and we had cake and it was great. Um, that's all I have to say, good night. What threats are Purple Martins facing today? Certainly, first and foremost, is their reliance on people for nesting habitat. Without the interest of people and people willing to take on the hobby to put up a house for these birds, these birds would be gone. So what I would like to see is purple martin colonies in public squares, at schools, out and visible to people because we found that when people are exposed to a purple martin colony and how cool it is to actually watch these birds do their thing. It inspires people later in life to take up that hobby. So, you know, with this being a perpetual problem for the species, we need to constantly be inspiring the next generation to take it up. Because if, if people just stop talking about it and the current Purple Martin caretakers out there lose interest or get too old for the hobby, you know, so goes the species. I'm Lynn Pollock. I've been a Martin landlord for probably the past 15 years. Each year I have a purple Martin party and it's a big feast out in the side yard and up to 70 some people come. So I show them the birds, I take that nest down. So it's, I, I want to incorporate education into it so that they know what it is. I just pray to God that younger people get an interest in it. We need another generation coming up behind us that will care for these birds because we're, we all seem to be the same age bracket, the baby boomers. I gotta, I gotta fix that in my area. I have to fix it. We're leaving in five minutes to get back on the boats, to go back to the island to try to find the birds again and hoping it doesn't rain. I feel really good about it. We're back at the Purple Martin Island Roost at sunset to see if we can see more birds today. The skies are so far so clear. This might be our last chance to get the footage that we need. 
So we are really, really hoping that we see a lot of birds today. We have a lot of the script left to film. Um, so again, fingers crossed, one, we don't get stuck in here, and two, uh, that we see a lot of birds and I know what to say and I say it correctly and that it doesn't rain. We're at our location for seeing Martins right now. Um, so now we're just waiting for them to come out. They leave the roost at sunset to eat bugs like this guy. He's gotta go, man. You gotta get out of here, skedaddle. We're like out here, like there's no people out here, but there's plastic in this river that's floated all the way down from Manas, uh, which is the closest city. Um, there's just bottles everywhere. We were starting to get worried about seeing these birds because it's getting dark and we weren't seeing them. And we were like, maybe they landed somewhere else. But we are starting to see them. They're, they're too high up for the camera to see right now. They're here, they're gone. They're here, they're gone. They're here, they're gone. Oh no, they're here. <laughs> uh, we're seeing a lot more birds now and they're getting closer to us. The dream, the dream, is that they come down and they land in this bush right here. So you see all of them. <laughs> That's the dream. Where they're gonna land, we have no idea. For a second here, we were really worried that they weren't gonna show up because it's really late and we're losing light and they started going to the other side of the island and but they circled back and now they're gone. They move so fast. I forget what I said. No, they're back. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, they had 300,000 purple martins in a roost out here. I have no idea how many birds this is. You can try counting them if you want, but it's a lot. They're aerial insectivores, so they're coming back to their roost for the night and eating a bunch of aquatic insects, eating a bunch of bugs um, and stuff as they're flying around. And every single one of these birds in the sky right now came from somebody's backyard in the United States, everywhere east of the Rockies. These birds are entirely dependent on artificial nesting that people provide for them. So all of these birds came from somebody's backyard in the US and now they're here for about two weeks until they molt and then they make a two week migration back to the States. It's crazy to see this many in person. Purple Martins have lost 25% of their population in the last 50 years for lots of reasons. One of them, they compete with invasive species in the US, European starlings and house sparrows for nesting. That's why they have to get artificial nesting provided by humans. Pollution, pesticide use, again, they eat insects. So pesticide use with insects and then the use of mercury for gold mining in the Amazon. Bioaccumulates in these insects, they eat them, they get very sick. Climate change. These birds now have to deal with extreme weather events on their migration, so they're burning through their fat reserves and leaving no room for air on the way back. This is not the roost that these birds were at last year. They had to go out and find the roost uh, before we got here. They picked a new one because the water level here is the lowest that it's been in the last 120 years. It's really important to conserve these birds. One, because they're beautiful and so cool and they just deserve to exist, but also, because they're aerial insectivores, they help regulate our insect populations. And I just learned the other day that they help the biodiversity in this river around this roost. Um, the biodiversity of fish is greater underneath their roost uh, because of all the droppings that come from these hundreds of thousands of birds. I saw purple martins, I saw a migratory roost in Austin like six months ago because they migrate from the US to Brazil every year. And we saw a ton of these birds, but it's insane to see them. These are the same ones. It's insane to see them all the way over here. They're such a cool conservation story for us to learn because they're affected by everything on the board. Pollution, climate change, invasive species, pesticide use, it's just everything. And you think of things in the Amazon, you think of things in Brazil, and you think there's nothing you could do about it, but every single one of these birds came from somebody's backyard in the US. It's just a crazy, crazy 
story of how much we can do, you know? You can see them all landing. They've all come in to eat a bunch of insects and they're just dropping into this roost to sleep for the night. And they've disappeared out of the sky, they're gone. <laughs> well, that's it. <laughs> so one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is because I've done work with Purple Martin Conservation Association for a few years. Uh, it's just a really, really cool conservation story. Uh, and there's a lot for us to learn from these little birds. They tell a really, really big story, things you can do to help them. Um, you can put up purple martin nests in your backyard in the U.S. Check out more info on PMCA's website about that. Planting native plants to help with insect populations. Avoiding pesticide use to help with insect populations because that's their food. Conserving the Amazon because this is their habitat um, or their non-breeding range. So eat less beef, consume less, reuse more and go support PMCA. Uh, they've helped a ton with making this video and they do such important work uh, for these little birds and they are the future for them. Uh, so if you wanna see them, stick around. Go give them a follow and a donation if you could.